Welcome back to part 3 of the build. Today we are going to do the heated pad, the extruder, hot end and the belt routing. Let's go! Right, it's time to have a little chat. Everything is going super fine. Now the only thing I found really weird is we were working on this, the tool head and all the things, including a tool head extruder, hot end, the uh, canvas board in the back, the strain relief. We were going well. We mounted the thing right here in the back and then in the manual we jumped to accessories or what it's called which means we are now putting in crap like this this thing right over here in the four corners we also have included this uh, spool holder thingy we uh, did some other things just like these little wipers over here now why they do it i have absolutely no clue i would rather continue the work we are doing on the tool head than jump around and start to do stuff like this and then another thing i know i have made a mistake i didn't buy the paneling i didn't read the manual and we also didn't buy the led lights those were also an optional plus now i'm not sure if in the LED bundle you also get the lights for the corners because right now only the screws are in where the, normally the PCB would be for the LED. So right now these are empty with some screws inside. If I want to remove it put in some LEDs to make these shine. In my opinion these things should have been included. For dear sake you are doing things in the corners that need to light up. There is no light right over here. So we basically have a bare bones system with all the things we need to make it actually print. But I bought the full kit. So in my opinion, would it be that bad to just include the 20 bucks or what is it for the LED lighting? That you don't include the paneling, I'm okay with that. That you order it from the country you live in, shipping paneling is going to be super expensive. But please, please Redfrick, include the freaking lighting and let us pay those whatever the 20 or 30 bucks this thing is extra for the lights. Right now I have to go to the site, figure out what I forgot to order in my full kit. So yeah. 
Ah, now the good thing is that this is my only complaint so far. Everything is going well. We did the belt tension like they asked us to do. Everything is just looking perfectly fine. So I can't wait to finish this thing. Now I hope I am done putting on some random crap so I can continue to build my printer and make it move. Well, right now I can say that if you're going to build this thing, it's probably going to be a three weekend kind of a deal. You will probably need four to six full working day so eight hours to finish this thing calibrate and do all of those things all right let's continue with the build What you just saw was me putting an OS on this little card powering this Raspberry Pi. In basic terms, we took an image from the internet, we used a tool to compile it on this SD card. This SD card is now acting as a hard drive for this thing, so we can run an operation system which is called Red OS. Then you can search for your Wi Fi, log in to that Red OS which is providing you with a hotspot, get in your info like your Wi Fi. After a reboot, you can connect with the Red OS by your Wi-Fi by typing in the IP address. After that, we connect the Raspberry Pi with this board, which is the Big Tree Tech Octopus V1.1 with just a USB cable. We flash some things with the Raspberry Pi on that board so these things can communicate and all the right stuff is in there. And right now, we can start the tedious part, which is going to be the cable management and just wiring everything together. I have gone to the manual and apparently we have to cut a lot of connectors because we have to crimp some new ones on and there is a whole bunch of things we have to do. This is probably going to take the whole day so let's get started with the wiring. There we have it, the first perfect layer. Well, we have a little bit of a squish on one corner, but this is 400 millimeters cubed. We have seen other printers like the uh, GD plus four. We also have the Sovol SV08 and neither of those two printers gave me the perfect squish on every print. And this is only the second print I am doing. And thanks to the beacon upgrades that's on the Red Tricks right now, yeah. Let me show you a massive plate and uh, yeah, 
This is looking absolutely perfect. Are we ready, brothers and sisters, for the first and perfect layer? And here we have it. Static, electricity, and all of it. <laughs> all right, so let's have a look, shall we? Yeah, this is looking like one of the best squished layers I have ever seen. But you don't have to believe me. Just look at it in the light. There you go. You can see there are here and there a little bit of inconsistencies, but uh, yeah, this is amazing. All right, brothers and sisters, I'm ready to call it. Here is the first kitty cat. An absolute awful result. We already seen that in the previous part. We did the full, but I mean the full filament tuning and we got an equal, <laughs> equal bad result. As you can see, we started to get heat creep right over here. The uh, layering is awful. It looks like we also have some Z bending going on. And I was thinking, what the hell is going on with this printer? Well, apparently the answer is going to be very simple. These printers come with a nozzle like this. This is a 0.6 hardened steel nozzle. Well, I can tell you one thing, brother, if you are buying the Rhetoric, this hot end, you can just throw it into the bin because this thing isn't worth putting it in. We now run the red trick with the 0.4, which is going to be a brass nozzle, nickel coated, and we went all the way from 13, 13, I mean, that's barely nothing, 13 uh, millimeters cubed of flow to 28 millimeters cubed, just from replacing the nozzle to a nickel plated brass. And the results are nice. And here are the results. On the bottom one, we got the 0.6 nozzle. So this is the 0.6 nozzle. The quality is absolutely awful. We have a huge bunch of VFA, and that is just because we need to dial down the speed. We had to drop down the speed to just get an acceptable print. And even then, the corners are just absolutely looking terrible. This is garbage. So then we changed the nozzle to the 0.4 nickel plated thingy, and this is the print that came out. We have nice sharp corners on all sides and we have as good as no VFA. The results are just amazing. This is a wonderful print printed at 330 millimeters a second at 10k acceleration for the inside walls and the outside walls were printed at 8k. Then I did a second one to verify that everything was going well. We still have the amazing looking results from the Rhetoric. This result is making me super, super happy. And then just to double check it wasn't the 3D Jake filament, I reprinted this one. This one also has been printed with the 0.4 nozzle at 330 millimeters a second with 24 cubic millimeters of flow. And here are the results. Like you can see, a very respectable result. These results are pretty nice. They are just as good as the other PLA one. Yeah, this is something to be very happy about. So in conclusion, the printer worked fine from the first day. We wasted about a full day of calibrating and all that stuff. And basically it was the problem of this freaking nozzle right here in my hand. If you have the hardened steel nozzle with the kit, just throw it away. This thing is absolute garbage. Now, one thing we could see, Printing at 330 millimeters a second, this thing is actually not sounding that loud. Once you go below the 150 millimeters mark, then the vibrations kick in and you get a lot of VFA like you could see in the first piece. So that's going to be it. We could see that the rhetoric is actually working. We did our first layer test. This is the biggest first layer test I have ever done and it is just perfect. Now, one thing I have seen is that uh, dropping down from a 0.6 to a 0.4, it's a little bit harder to get very consistent first layer. So what I'm probably going to do is get one of those Bontech CHT nozzles with the bi-metal uh, thingy pressed in and try that one because 0.6 is actually a really nice size to do your printing. Not if we have awful extrusion, so hopefully the Bontech one can fix that problem. Then to quickly go over everything we have done, the building experience was absolutely amazing. I loved every second of it. It is just like using Knacks or Lego like back in the days. The only thing that I think is a little bit annoying is that when we get at the wiring part, then the manual drops down in quality and you have to do a lot of recramping. I really wish that some of these cables were crimped correctly so you don't have to do it. 
the crimps that you get are just enough to do the work so if you screw one up and you're shit out of luck you are done waiting for parts to replace it so make sure that you have some crimps laying around that when these fail that you can recrimp another one on it then the kit this is the full kit the full premium kit like they call it well there is no lighting no leds no webcam but i got one right here on the corner it's only about 25 bucks to get a webcam in there so you have a camera feed in my opinion we almost paid two grand there's no webcam in it there are no lights in it these things are the designs to have lights the, these lights are not in here these probably are optional i didn't find them the raspberry pi was a purchase we had to do separately even the freaking damn power cable that you need to do to make this thing run isn't supplied with the sprinter so those are things that i would like to see change in the future so i want to see lighting and all the kits from scratch i would like to see that the power cable is included for freak's sake why why is there no power cable in there and then make sure that there are enough crimps so you can do your work Whew. all right this has been an amazing experience don't run away just yet make sure that you're subscribed because we are going to do a lot of fun things with this thing we are going to do some great prints i'm also going to make an enclosure for this because the paneling is also optional and then lastly i want to thank you for watching the whole series then i also want to thank the members of the channel you guys rock thank you so much for supporting me and if you want to support me in the future there will be a link down below so you can become a member for one buck a month and join the absolute carnage that is noisy works Thank you so much for watching and guys, I see you in the next one.